Forever chemicals are toxins that don't break down easily in our bodies or the environment, hence the name. In this video, I want to discuss blood and plasma donations as a way to detect them from your body. Recent research suggests that it could be a viable way to get rid of forever chemicals like PFASs. But as you will see, the whole story is a little more complicated than it might seem at first. To start off this video, let me quickly explain what forever chemicals actually are. They are a group of synthetic, so man-made chemicals used for their water and stain-resistant properties. So you will find them in products like non-stick cookware, water-resistant clothing, and firefighting foam. The technical name is PFASs, per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, and they earn the nickname forever chemicals because they don't naturally decompose and cannot be effectively broken down. So over time, they not only accumulate in the environment, but also potentially in our bodies. Unlike microplastics, which come from the breakdown of larger plastic products and are actual physical particles, forever chemicals are more like chemical pollutants. But they both share the problem that our body has a very difficult time eliminating them. They have been linked to a variety of health problems like hormonal disruptions, liver damage, a weakened immune system, and as always, certain types of cancer. But there is also good news. A study from a university in Sydney, Australia, showed that donating blood and or plasma could help remove some of these pollutants from your body. Here's how the study was designed. It involved 285 local firefighters who had elevated levels of forever chemicals, especially those found in firefighting foams. The firefighters were randomly assigned into several groups. One that donated plasma every six weeks, one that donated whole blood every 12 weeks, or one with no donations, and all happened over a 12-month period. Their forever chemical levels were measured at four intervals. At recruitment, the state of the trial, after 12 months of following their treatment plan, and again, three months after that, to test if the results were sustained. Basically, what was found was that both plasma and blood donations led to significantly lower levels of forever chemicals compared to the control group. This reduction lasted through the three-month follow-up, and plasma donations were most effective, resulting in a reduction of around 30% in average serum concentration. Now, why exactly did this work? It is probably due to the fact that many types of forever chemicals bind to certain proteins, which are primarily found in your blood. Usually, environmental pollutants tend to bind to fats and accumulate in your fatty tissue, and not so much in the blood, which makes it very difficult to get them out of your body. But the chemicals measured in this study seem to bind to proteins, meaning they're more present in your blood and could therefore be flushed out with it. The study also showed that plasma donations were more effective. There are several reasons for this. One, the participants in the group donated every six weeks compared to every 12 weeks for the blood donation group. Two, each plasma donation can be as much as 800 milliliters, while whole blood donations are typically around 400 to 500 milliliters. Three, the toxin concentration in plasma was also about twice as high as in whole blood, so you're also getting a higher relative proportion out if you donate plasma instead of whole blood. Lastly, the plasma group also showed lower markers of PFHXS, which is another type of forever chemical that was not reduced in the control group and the whole blood group. What you need to keep in mind though is that donating plasma is a more complex process that is also more uncomfortable for the participant. You did see this in the study as well, where more people dropped out of the plasma group than the whole blood group. So with that said, what can we learn from this study? To be honest, the bottom line is pretty simple and the researchers stated themselves in their conclusion. Plasma and blood donations cause greater reductions in serum PFAS levels than observation alone over a 12-month period. So at least from what we know right now, both are effective tools for detoxing certain forever chemicals. Of the two ways, so between donating blood and plasma, plasma would be the more effective one, but it's also more invasive and more taxing on the body. That also brings me to the question of how applicable these findings are for the average person. First and most important, even though this study focused on firefighters, this elimination pathway works for anyone. 
PFASs are found in a wide range of products that most of us use every day, like food packaging and cosmetics. So chances are pretty high that almost everyone also has some type of forever chemical burden in their body. Donating blood or plasma is a pretty straightforward way to reduce your toxin load of these chemicals. But there are also drawbacks. When you donate blood, you're not just losing the bad stuff like toxins, but also good stuff like essential nutrients, vitamins and minerals. So while it might help reduce forever chemicals, it could also leave you short on important stuff that your body needs. Nowadays, a lot of people are borderline deficient in many nutrients without knowing it. So please don't think that all you need to do is donate blood as much as you can and you will forever be healthy. For some people, it makes sense, like the firefighters that are constantly exposed to toxins that are primarily found in the blood. The average person, though, will have a different toxin profile because we aren't just surrounded by forever chemicals, but also toxic metals, xenoestrogens, and other problematic things that harm our health. And like I said before, most of these toxins are fat soluble and therefore accumulate in your fatty tissue, not in your blood. So in the worst case, you could theoretically be depleting your blood nutrient levels and still be overloaded with harmful substances in your tissue. To get rid of these tissue toxins, you need to improve your elimination pathways, which means mostly better liver function and increasing detox cofactors. I talk about all of that in a different video. The bottom line is that you always have to balance the benefits with the risks and you have to know your individual situation. Some people feel amazing after donating blood, while for others, it completely knocks them out. That's why I stay away from generalized comments like everyone should be donating more blood or plasma. It can definitely make sense for some people, but please don't see this as the quick fix that many health gurus make it out to be. And of course, frequency matters. Donating too often will definitely deplete essential nutrients, even if your current levels are fine. You need to give your body time to replenish what's lost, or you might end up doing more harm than good. So make sure to space out your donations and check in with your practitioner regularly to monitor your health markers and nutrient levels.